Hey guys, what's up? It's Alex or Nuznuz here. In this video, I'm going to do something similar that I did to Zamrock while also talking about some upcoming changes for Necromancy that were kind of just announced. So essentially, when Zamrock was released, I did a video called the ups and downs from Zamrock release where I talked about the good things about the release and the things that were kind of bad that I did enjoy. And I'm going to do that here. But first, I want to go through some of the kind of things that Jagex just put out in a Necromancy community feedback update. Update. Now, I'm not going to go over everything here, but I'll link the post below because I don't want to just, you know, read everything out here and make this video super long. But I do want to go through a few key points. So if we look here, we can see all these stuff in the news posts and essentially Jagex has made it into things they're investigating, uh, updates that they're, you know, going to put out in the next system update, things that they've already resolved. Uh, so we can kind of look at an extensive list of this. All right, first let's go over the things that have already been fixed. So fix an issue with next angel of death pillars caused by necromancy spirits. Fix an issue where if clearing a depleted alteration glyph while another glyph was active, the alteration value would be unnecessarily removed again. I think that happened to me, so it's good they fixed that. Um, they've removed some player made ritual disturbances, which uh, I saw there were a bunch of people that would put down like protein traps and make it hard to click, just generally kind of griefing that world. I don't know why people do that, but they did. Um, you can no longer drop items on the ritual platform, place hunter traps on the site, and rest perform emotes. So, you know, those are good. They're just small things that are going to make uh, doing rituals a little bit better. And then the Shambling Horse target now has green smoke to identify it rather than sparkles. So, this will, uh, this will make this this did make the shambling horror a lot better to uh to do so um the shambling horror was one of the worst parts i think of this update but it you know was way better after they added this also, I want to put out, Jaggy says this is not an exhaustive list of everything the team is working on, so there might be other things that are going to be added or fixed. This is just kind of giving us a little bit of an update through it. And now we're going to look at the ones that are kind of awaiting a system update, so they will be fixed when the next system update comes. All right, so there's a lot here, but the main ones that I feel like are ones that you should note is the tier 70 death guard special attack death grasp will no longer fail the cast on Criara, Avian C. So I guess there was a problem with the special attack working on them. Uh, the death skulls ability will now correctly ready death spark when using the death essence special attack from the Omni guard. So death spark is with the new Omni guard, the new tier 95 weapon. And I guess death skulls wasn't working correctly to ready that death spark buff. So that's good that they changed that. I also saw bloats total duration has been shortened so it is the same damage just faster so this might be able to make bloat a little bit better um it's it's kind of hard to tell but i know bloat was an ability that i really haven't used much or found much use for uh, another really nice thing i like is the darkness incantations duration was increased from four minutes to 12 minutes and this is essentially that the incantation that lets you dodge things and it was kind of annoying because if you went into boss fights that were over four minutes you would have to cast this again uh, they did change the rune cost of course to account for this which is good but um, you can cast that for much longer and another thing is it won't be cleared when teleporting to certain locations which was nice because if i cast it and then i had to go bank or something and i teleported it would go away and i'd have to spend runes to cast again so that is a really really nice change there and it looks like they reduced the rune cost of invoke death which i have not really used much so this is a big one that's going to be happening. Melees, ranged, and magic abilities can once again benefit from Meteor Strike, Incinerary Shot, and Tsunami abilities. Adrenaline boosting buff while we investigate more meaningful changes to these abilities that maintain value for experienced combat players to avoid, but avoid unnecessary complexity for those less experienced. So essentially a lot of people were upset because this essentially made it uh, so there was a lot less adrenaline gain uh, from magic range and melee which a lot of high-level PVMers use for speed kills and different things, and this essentially got rid of that uh, without really a replacement. So um, I think it's good that they're at least, you know, holding off until they can find something viable to replace it with. The Necromancy basic attack will now correctly be cast when using Revolution after interacting with the inventory. I think I had this happen too, and it was it was pretty annoying. 
This is probably one of the best ones. Conjured spirits will no longer forcefully close interfaces. This is, was super annoying. If you conjured your spirits and then went to start an instance, you pretty much couldn't start an instance. It would constantly close out of the instance interface. So I'd have to basically unsummon them, start my instance up, and then go through the whole process again. So that is, is just really, really nice. Another very good one is clicking away from the ritual platform before starting. No longer force walks a player back to the platform. The force walking for rituals got pretty annoying, so it's nice they're addressing that a little bit. So it looks like they're also making a ton of changes to ritual events. So they added smoke clouds when spawning the wandering soul, shambling horror and corrupt glyphs. They added passive audio to the storm and defile. They added audio to the shambling horror and glyphs. They added success audio. Added audio when the defile pool crackles. They increased the brightness, slowed down the speed, and changed text pops up. So essentially they just made rituals just a lot better to do these events. You'll see them a lot more. Before, people would change their filters. They kind of had a tough time seeing things. But now you have sound. Uh, you essentially can see these better and you have a lot more indication. So I think this is a really good thing and it's just going to make it a lot better. They also tweak the Shambling Horror so you can continue to guess on ritual components after failing. You don't have to re-click a million times, which is another amazing thing. Uh, they move some pop-up text. They improve funkiness with Force Walk when doing random events, which is, again, huge. One of the things I didn't like uh, really about uh, Necromancy. A big thing for Iron Men is regular ashes when you pick them up will now be transferred to the bank while wearing the Tome of Um 1 or 2. So that's really nice so you don't need to use porters if you're an Iron Man because you need to collect a lot of ashes. Let's be honest, there's a ton of ashes. So they're also going to update the Night Ice Nihil to a Necromancy familiar. So this is going to be really good for Necromancy uh, once it comes out with the next game update. So all familiars. Night Hills are now 112 combat, so now you can use the Ice Night Hill uh, for Necromancy, which will be uh, which will be pretty nice. They also are giving a slight buff, it looks like, to the Omni Guard. The passive effect stacks has been reduced from 6 to 5, so I guess that might actually be a nerf. But the special attack adrenaline cost has been reduced from 50% to 30%, so that actually is a pretty big buff there. Um, there's a few other things, uh, like they said, the Death Skull's ability uh, will now ready Death Spark. Um, there's a lot of, a lot, a lot of stuff here. Uh, Comet XP Roan Rune Metrics now includes a Necromancy, okay? So a lot of smaller things here, um, but uh, most of the big ones I think we covered that are going to come with the next game update. And then we have a few other that they're investigating real quick. So one of the main ones is Death Skulls can double dip on damage buffs. So they said they like damage ramping, so they might find a solution that's appropriate, essentially saying that Death Skulls is super OP, uh, more OP than they intended, but they want to find a solution. So hopefully this means they're not going to nerf it into the ground. Um, we have a few others like Necromancy Lanterns are sometimes held improperly, uh, Death Mark causing niche issues, um, Death Skulls, uh, things that are preventing it from bouncing, which again, I think is a really cool thing um, with Death Skulls. Looking for a better way to display Necrosis on a player, so I think this will be better rather than having to look at your buff bar. Maybe they'll have a bar uh, like under under your character health bar. Might Might make it a little bit easier to keep track of. And then they say they're continuing to monitor the adrenaline cost and use of abilities. So, you know, I know since Necromancy just came out, there could be a lot of changes to it coming soon. But I'm glad, you know, they've resolved some and it seems like some good ones are coming with the next update. So now let's kind of get into what I thought about Necromancy and see if you guys agree with me with some of the things I really liked and some of the things I really didn't. So for Necromancy, I was invited to Jagex to fly out and playtest it. I didn't have a passport at the time and had some stuff going on, so I couldn't go. Uh, it was really cool, and I wish I could have met some of the awesome people there, um, but I wasn't able to do that. So I kind of went into Necromancy blind. I didn't really watch many videos, wasn't sure if I was going to play much. Uh, but after going into a blind, I really enjoyed the initial release. I feel like level 1 to, you know, 70 or 80 was extremely fun. I love doing the quests, learning about the rituals. Um, essentially, everything was just great. A, a good amount of discovery. Now, not as much discovery as archaeology. Uh, you know, archaeology had all the mysteries and stuff, which I really loved. And I wish there was kind of more of with this. But I did like the initial first few days, level 70 to 80. 
After this, it kind of got a little bit of the same. Um, I did enjoy doing the new bosses, Hermod, Raziel, kind of crafting the armor. I thought it was all great. I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. But after that, it kind of came to dawn on me that it felt more like a 99 skill than a 120 skill. Like a lot of the content to 120 just doesn't feel like it's there. Now I know there's more stuff coming, uh, potentially a new boss like Vorkath coming to RS3 later or some more Necrom stuff so I know that's coming later so hopefully they add more to it uh, but the fact that essentially it felt like after 99 or 95 even I didn't really have much to do and it was all the same was it, it wasn't you know it sucked a little bit because I know with archaeology it felt like there was a ton to do everywhere I also feel like necromancy felt like in its own little world a little bit now I know they did make an area specifically for it which is why it kind of felt like that but with archaeology it felt like I was traveling all all over the game going to different dig sites mysteries um and with this it kind of felt like it just seemed like it was lacking a little bit in terms of stuff that came out with it now i know it's a combat style so it's a huge undertaking but i wish you know maybe there were more slayer mobs maybe necromancy kind of interacted with other skills a little bit more uh like you know maybe some necromancy archaeology relics that were specific from you know necromancy bosses or monsters maybe some i was surprised there wasn't like a necromancy slayer dungeon uh and more necromancy like you know maybe skilling spots in the city and stuff i just expected you know in that sense a little bit more but as for the combat i actually find it super fun to use and i know a lot of people are feeling the same that it's you know very fun to use you can get up to tier 90 armor and weapons basically for very cheap by yourself you can get it all by just doing the hermad boss and doing rituals and stuff getting materials so that's really cool that a lot of people are able to get tier 90 gear armor and stuff without having to spend tons of money but in turn this did affect the economy a little bit as i Items have gone down a considerable amount for the other styles. Now, this may be an overreaction to, you know, necromancy just coming out, people not knowing how powerful it'll be, all that stuff. It's like Bow of the Last Guardians went to under max cash. Uh, a lot of things went down a ton. Um, I think the most expensive drop right now is Dormant Saren Godbow, which is weird. But yeah, that was kind of a thing that, you know, items have gone down a lot. And I think, you know, maybe they're hopefully will be some changes to the other styles i hope jagex uh, does kind of bring the other styles up to par with necromancy if it is the case that necromancy is just so much better than everything else i haven't done enough you know testing and pvm to know but it seems like it's pretty powerful uh seeing as i've seen a lot of people get personal bests and records on different bosses using necromancy so i'm sure it will be tweaked a little but yeah the economy was a little bit interesting to see items go down so much in price and i guess could you know have made a lot of people upset but at the same time it is kind of nice uh for people that couldn't get items you know maybe items are cheaper now so we'll just have to see how that plays out um but the main thing for me i really enjoyed rituals at first but after a while especially getting the 35k souls and just essentially sitting there having to get 35k souls for the new boss it did feel like once i got to like level 70 that i kind of knew everything uh especially going from 99 to 120 seems like it would be extremely boring you know uh, rituals are so good xp that it's not really that um you know enticing to go and do a bunch of different combat methods i thought maybe there would be some more methods to gain xp other than just doing the same ritual over and over again which i know is skilling but it just did feel a little lackluster there i'm curious to know your guys thoughts on necromancy i am all in all really enjoying it um in terms of necromancy versus archaeology there's pros and cons as for the combat style i really enjoy it i'm having a ton of fun pvming at bosses that i normally wouldn't or that i haven't gone back to in a while just trying them out and learning them with necromancy is having you know i'm having a ton of fun with that as for the depth of the skill itself and how to train it i do like archaeology better i did like all the mysteries and how it involved like the entire game it felt very massive this does feel massive in in terms of combat but i feel like is lacking uh, some of that other st stuff in terms of the training methods and things that come along with it so i'm curious to let you for you guys to let me know what your thoughts are on necromancy below and also i hope you enjoyed this video 
you know, on, on, you know, some of the changes that are upcoming and things like that. Haven't made one of these in probably an update video in probably about like eight months to a year. So uh, it's been a while. So sorry if I mumbled a little bit, but yeah, make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. Make sure you check if you're subscribed because there's been a lot of YouTubers that I thought I was subscribed to for the longest time, but wasn't. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in a few days for another really awesome necromancy video.